Hello math class, welcome back to another lesson. This is le lecture five, similar objects, scale models and scale diagrams. This is in unit eight. Uh, so what we're going to kind of do today is we're going to um, scale up and scale down some objects. We're gonna compare some to see if they are uh, scale models of each other uh, or similar objects. Uh, and But the first thing we're gonna do uh, we're going to do a definition and we're going to talk about Rubik's cubes. I'm going to also try to draw something, so bear with me. Uh, so similar objects, as you might already know, are two or more 3D objects that have proportional dimensions. Essentially boxes that are all the same uh, proportion in terms of their length, width, and height. Um, an example, a really, really good example of that is a Rubik's cube. Uh, so what we're going to do... I'm going to draw just the front of a Rubik's Cube first, like we're just looking at the front of it. So we're going to have a really nice square, a really, really excellent square. And as you know, if you're looking at a Rubik's Cube, uh, it's split into three parts each way. These are exactly proportional. These are perfect. Okay. So essentially, if we were to say that like this is the length over here, this entire thing is the length, one cube of this would be like one third the length, right? And this one would be one third the length, and this one would be one third the length, right? We could do that all the way up this side as well, but we're not going to. Uh, each one of the cubes would be have a length one third the length and if we're talking about area that could be like this side and this side so we'd be multiplying it together or squaring it right so let's think about here we have one third for a length let's find the area of the smaller one it would also be like one third the length right like one third times one third and we get an area that is one ninth. So that kind of shows the compounding nature when we talk about a scale factor. It's one third smaller on the side, but its area is one ninth smaller. Let's turn this into a 3D object. I'll can, should I, can, no, I'm gonna do blue. I wanted to continue with red, but I'm going to, I'm gonna do blue. Let's can turn this into a 3D object. Actually, that's gonna be okay. We're going to have lines that go down like this. Maybe it's a little long in the back, but that's not bad. Okay, and we are going to then make lines like that, line like that, line like that. Let's see, from here to here and here to here. Man, I'm getting good at this art thing. So we can now imagine, let's look at, we've got this side here, we got one third the length. This length also, because also is because it's a cube, would be one third the length. And then we also have, for this cube, we got one third the length here. So if we're talking about volume and we're adding depth into it, we are going to have one third times one third times one third. And the volume then being like one twenty seventh of the entire cube. So you can see again, how the scale factor compounds itself. Even though the sides, again, are only one third the length, instead of nine, they're three or whatever, the, this compounds in the area, and it is one ninth the area of the entire thing. And you can kind of see that from this diagram, that this is one ninth of this entire thing. And then the volume compounds even more. It is only one twenty seventh. This square right here, that looks way bigger than it should. Let's, let's do this one. This square right here is 1 27th of the entire thing. So it just wants to, I just want to show you how um, a scale factor really can compound when we're talking about area and when we're talking about volume. Let's do some examples and find some similar objects. So we're going to determine if uh, this frying pan is similar. Now, uh, it doesn't have any of the um, measurements on the diagram, unfortunately. So you'll just have to bear with me as we work through it here. Um, we always want to um, have consistency when we're finding out if two uh, frying pans are similar. 
So we're going to always have the large pan on top and we're going to have the smaller pan on the bottom. So you can see that there's two pans in there. There's a big one and a small one. We want to find out if they are all the same proportions. Uh, for its bottom, it says that in the question that we can't see here, I apologize, that uh, the large has a bottom of 30 uh, for an area, sorry, for a, um, a diameter. And the smaller one has 20 for a diameter. So what we get here is we get three halves for a ratio. Now what we're going to do is we are going to find out if the rest of the di um, the rest of the parts of the frying pans also have a ratio of three to two when we do large over small. So it says for the depth of the uh, frying pans, the large depth is six centimeters, I assume, and the small depth is four we can reduce that to three halves. So, so far, so good. Everything is proportional, same scale factors. Let's talk about the handle. This is the last one. The handle uh, has a length of 24 and a small one of 16. If we reduce that again, we get three halves. So that means that these are indeed similar pans. They're probably made by the same company. Um, so similar objects would be very, very common. Let's go to the next problem. In this problem, we're going to determine the uh, actual dimensions from a scale model. So Esmeralda bought this toy tractor to give to her younger brother for his birthday. The dimensions of the toy are given in the diagram to the right and on your booklet. The scale ratio in the package is 1 to 16. She knows that her brother will want to know the size of the real tractor, so she wants to determine that for uh, her brother. So let's see, we've got a ratio of 1 to 16. Okay, 1 to 16. Uh, that means, let's see, I'll just make sure I get everything correct here, that we are going to be scaling up. We want to find out what the real tractor is. So we are going to be having K is 16 divided by 1, or K equals 16. So it is very important to find out what the scale factor is or K is so we can si um, make each um, size that we're given, the width, the length, and the height uh, to the real size. So for the height, we're given 12.7 centimeters and we're scaling it up by a factor of 16 to get 203 centimeters. Not exactly a super helpful number um, so that is 2.03 meters for the height. For the width of the tractor, it is measured as 9.5 centimeters. And we're going to multiply that by 16 to get 152 centimeters. Again, 152 centimeters for her brother. Maybe he'd want to know 1.52 meters. Maybe he can put that into scale in his head better. And then the length of the tractor, we're given 19.1 centimeters. This is the largest length that we're given. It should end up being the largest overall. If it's not, check your work, but we found it to be 306 centimeters or 3.06 meters. So those are the uh, dimensions of the real tractor. There is a your turn for you to do here. So it talks about the diameter of the rear tires on the model. Uh, wants to know what the diameter of the uh, real tires on the tractor would be. So pause it here and give it a go and unpause and we'll see if we got it correct. So the diameter of the rear tire is six centimeters. Uh, the diameter is not an area or a volume unit so we can just keep using the single K factor. So we multiply by 16 to get 96 centimeters or 0.96 meters. That is the size in real life. All right, let's see, we've got two more examples, two more examples. One more example in a your turn actually, it looks like. So Nadia has found plans for bookend uh, for bookend in a woodworking magazine. The plans include a scale diagram, 
with a scale ratio of 1 to 5. Determine the dimensions of the actual bookends. Okay, so we're given a bunch of different views, and we're given the scale factor of 5. K is 5. So let's start with the base. The base is shown as 1.5 inches, and we are going to multiply by, multiply by 5, its scale factor, to get 7.5 inches in real life. Let's do its thickness. Its thickness is given as a quarter of an inch. Multiply by its scale factor. Uh, 5 times 0.25 should be 1.25 inches for its actual thickness. Let's see, we've got the width of the bookend. It shows us the width of the bookend is 1 inch. So we are going to multiply that by 5 to get 5 inches for its true width. And for its height, the bookend, uh, we have the bottom of a quarter inch, and then it says that the length this way is one and three quarter inches. So we got to add those together. So 1.75 plus 0.25 should be the entire height. Multiply that by five. So bed mass, we'd add these together first and then multiply by five to get 10 inches high. Okay, so you just take the uh, values that they gave you and because we're making it larger overall we know that we need to multiply by the scale factor now there's the your term uh, essentially what would the book dimension what would the dimensions of the book end have been if the scale ratio on the fence had been two to nine so two to nine instead of one to five so pause it here give it a try and come back so instead of the scale factor being five uh, simply, the only difference is that the scale factor is 4.5. So you would take all of those values and you would multiply them by 4.5. So the first one for the base, 1.5 times 4.5 gets us 6.75 inches. For the thickness, it was 0.25 given to us. So we multiply that by 4.5 we would get 1.125 inches. For its width, uh, it was given to us as 1, so instead of multiplying by 5, it's 4.5. And we multiply the height, uh, it was originally th 1 and 3 quarters plus a quarter multiplied by 5, but instead it's 4.5, so we get 9 inches instead. So it slightly changes the um, end values. But overall, your bookend would probably work just fine either way, if it was 4.5 or 5. Check out the summary, the key ideas, and the need to know section, and get to work on the practice problems. And if you have any questions at all, please let me know. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon.